morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Raff, and I'm here to usher you in into the weekend of February 26th. I have I'm referring to my notes and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the news that are happening in and around uh, Missoula, the state of Montana, and pretty much all around the United States. A lot of things going on here as well. Um, these are the kind of the stories that kind of uh, caught my eye. Uh, we're kicking things off with Winco Foods. Winco Foods is basically kind of like Costco but without the membership cards. It's going to be a bulk food store that just opened this week on February 22nd. Uh, it, uh, basically replaced uh, the location that used to be Shopko, which, fun fact, Shopko was one of the first retail outlets in the city of Missoula. Or uh, At that time, I think he was even part of the county because of the way they, uh, the city plans. But anyways, I do have a little bit more to talk about um, in terms of uh, the Idaho-based company that already has shops in Billings and Helena, and we'll see how it works in, in with its direct competition with its next door neighbor, Rose Hours. In my personal experience, it's uh, hard to get in and out of the parking lot because of South and Reserve Street traffic. Um, and also, uh, one of the big things that happened earlier this week as well is that we hit the 500,000 death toll mark when it came to COVID-19. Um, I'm kind of going all over the place. It feels like it's like ADHD in terms of just like the news, but that's kind of how <laughs> the news is delivered, if you really notice. But um, President Joe Biden says, as a nation, we cannot accept a, such a cruel fate. We have to resist becoming numb to the sorrow. There's a lot of stuff going on here as well as numbers are continuing to slow down as more and more people are getting COVID vaccines. Schools around the nation are moving towards reopening and also the Biden administration is eager to get states uh, to test children. For the past two decades, federal law has required schools to uh, test students once a year in a math and reading um, in grades uh, three through eighth um, and once in high school. Um, and they are required to publicly report these standardized test results. Mo most of this had to do with uh, No Child Left Behind uh, part of, during uh, the Bush administrations, just to basically how much funding or how to uh, incentivize and decentivize uh, education in the schools. A lot of schools, uh, it, it's it's always been a kind of a, a contested issue with a lot of different things. But with this, they're moving forward with uh, holding schools accountable with various sanctions if their school if their students score too low. Uh, I remember some of those days back in the day as well as in, when I was in school. You basically felt those. Uh, uh, there's bubbles A, B, C, and sometimes D, but mostly all of the, all four. It was uh, very mind-numbing to say the least, and it an inter interrupted normal school curriculum. Um, but that's just more of my own personal opinion. Um, let's see. Also, I've uh, like I don't know if you guys have noticed in the last couple of weeks, but Congress and oversight committees have basically been inviting people from various sources and various things that have been happening. One of the latest ones is uh, Postmaster General uh, uh, Louis DeJoy, who visited Congress as his oversight committee to talk about some of his uh, actions during uh, October before the election, and then of course with the whole disappearance of some of those blue post boxes, uh, it seemed like they're recalling a couple of those boxes. Uh, Postmaster Durr also mentioned that there is a huge need and there's a huge issue in particular with those with pension plans for the re retired employees. Many of the oversight committee blamed DeJoy for issues in the article from NPR leading up to the election which saw the removal of those blue mailboxes. Um, and also, uh, there was a bump, a, 20, a $25 um, billion grant to be injected during the uh, pandemic and also the upcoming elect the 2020 election. DeJoy told Congress to get used to seeing him because he ain't going anywhere. Postmaster generals are appointed by the Board of Governors of the United States Postal Service, uh, appointed by the President with advice and consent of the Senate and whether or not they're going to replace them or not is still kind of up in the air, but there is um, wheels are moving on that. But um, there's a lot of other people that kind of uh, was there. The police, the former police chief of Washington D.C., uh, spoke forward about the attacks that they were not ready for for the January sixth, uh, yeah, uh, among the FBI warning as well. Um, another big thing that happened in the state of Montana is that last Friday, uh, this kind of happened right after my show dropped, and uh, Greg Gianforte signed a, a bill into law, basically allowing any Montana residents to have a concealed carry. 
uh, concealed uh, firearm. Uh, so part of this is basically, you know, Montana has always been a kind of a pro-gun state. They had open carry, so you could basically go into the stores and have a, a gun on your holster. But nowadays, uh, with this new bill that's going into place, I don't know the effective date. You can look up more information. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But uh, with this... Uh, concealed carry uh, law in place, uh, you don't have to get a permit anymore, and if you're a resident of Montana, you can have a concealed firearm. Um, so, part of this also says that it's still under the same guidelines as, you know, the open carry law, where you're not allowed to carry in schools, federal buildings that supersede the state law. Um, but if you want to know more about this bill and the laws, you can go to leg.mt.gov. But without further ado, uh, here is a nice highlight video from the Dude I Just Drew Valentine special. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some movies that are coming out this week. So stay with me. Hello, everybody. Well, welcome back to Dude I Just Drew. We haven't done anything in months. But, but we're back, baby, to a Valentine special. Very, very, very heart, heart day. Um, I'm, I'm, oh boy. <laughs> I'm joining here with, uh, with, with uh, all my all my good good pals here, uh, Josh, yo, yeah. Graham, Scott, what up? So what we're doing today is it, is it a meet? Is it what are we doing again? We're doing Photoshop. Yeah. I'm doing stuff. I'll, I'll do Photoshop. You, you two can draw. Yes, that we'll is. be just doing a. We'll be doing right. like yeah, a. Yeah. Uh, we're doing like kind of a meme stream where we draw and. and uh, Photoshop and share it here on the on our Discord page. Yeah. Uh, what do our prompts look like this time around? Uh, well, yeah. Neil Neil kind of started it all off with uh, Valentine's uh, themes. It's uh, the I Defy You Heart Man. Uh, from Spongebob. So. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to start off with a heart. Because I think that's very important. Why are hearts a thing, Josh? Why do you think they exist? Oh, uh, okay, so... Hearts exist in humans. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. But is this a heart, or is it just an upside-down butt? I mean, it's definitely not what a heart really looks like, because oh, that's yeah. gross. Yeah. There's no valves, there's uh, no arteries. Or... Yeah, yeah. Ugh, heart man. Whoa, whoa. Jeez, is that its neck? It, right here, isn't that like Patrick's head that he's looking at from there? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you just get rid of that a little bit, then... Boom, it's Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Got his arm. He's got his arm outstretched. Oh yeah, he does kind of just have like. It's a. It, is, it, is this like an action scene, Rowan? Him punching. <laughs> Him punching. It's razor. It's, it's razor ripping uh, Hartman in half. Wait, I gotta check out. Oh. Runs. Okay. Oh, that yeah. He's in. He's like mid action there. Nice. It's like. It's like this is what happens you when you. Rip me in half. Now prepare to die. This is what happens when you anger the heart man. <laughs> this, is, this is how. This is how. Uh, this is. This is the result. You don't mess with Patrick. You need to get his pants right. Yeah, the pants have to. Kind of like he has. <laughs> he has the shorts that kind of match the sky, but it's like. Uh, like a lime color. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then I, I have another idea. Uh, the heart from, from Adventure Time. Um, oh, Ricardio? Yeah, Ricardio. Yeah. Ice King's heart. Ice King. That would be fun. I, I, love, I love Ricardio. Yeah. yeah, it's Ice King's heart. All right, awesome. Just for context for people who don't know what we're talking about. For Ricard Ricardio? Ricard okay, so Ricardio is a, uh, is a character from Adventure Time. They're on. Just, Tell us what you yeah. know about hearts. How much do I know about hearts? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's my What's my knowledge on uh, the heart? Um, they They're They're in your body, and if they're outside your body, you'll die. They're. In... <laughs> okay, here's, 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 here's,
Just, uh, <laughs> in your body. Whoa! De defy this, heart man. <laughs> defy this, heart man. <laughs> in the trunk. <laughs> Whoa! Alright, if mine's all done, I'm gonna share it. Yes. It's really yeah. bad. Who's <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> inside? Isn't that Patrick again? That is Patrick. It was, it was from the uh, SpongeBob movie when they were uh, looking into the uh, that like bar area for the spatula key, and then they were like peeking, and <laughs> that's the face Patrick pulled when he was peeking into the window. There it is, the rendition. Colored rendition. <laughs> That's like the face he's pulling right when he's ripping it off. He's like expecting that to happen. He's like, or but at the same time, he's like, why'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> I am a little disappointed that you didn't give him uh, his the, oh. the little uh, Valentine's underwear that he was wearing. So, so, look at that. There it is. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why'd you, why'd you rip off my costume? Why did you, why did you do this? <laughs> why'd you do this? I, I have a job. Why are you... Why are you not letting me do my job? Why are you not letting me do my job? Thanks, You're welcome. Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for Pre-Critic. This is where I pre-judge a movie based on nothing but my pre-notion of movies, cinema, uh, television, whatever, um, and my own kind of personal biases. Mostly my personal biases. Let's kick things off with Tom and Jerry. Ugh. They get the whole Space Jam treatment where they animate uh, these cartoon characters into a live-action movie. Welcome to the hellscape that is cartoons and live-action movies. Tom and Jerry is an iconic intellectual property that is not well protected uh, and produced like Disney. Um, Warner Brothers brings the iconic characters back to life again. Uh, there have been countless movies with the duo, but let's ignore all of those and get some celebrities looking for a quick cash during the pandemic. Uh, this movie kind of looks like those two characters go their separate ways, and then they're forced to come back together, and then they fight some more goofy antics, and then they learn that there is uh, more common ground between the two of them, and they learn to uh, work with each other instead of working against each other. Everyone learns a lesson. Maybe the humans are kind of like, it's like, Maybe we can learn a lot from that cat and mouse. Mouse traps usually work, but in this kids' movies, they they shouldn't get too invested in uh, something your grandparents watched when they were kids. Hyper violent cartoons. Uh, why do old kid movies come back with the old? Just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in. Uh, this next movie is an uh, Oscar bait drama movie with Anthony Hopkins. Hey, Anthony Hopkins, he's in this movie. He's like, I can expect a great performance from this. But the whole concept of the movie is the father. Anthony Hopkins holds this movie single-handedly in a movie about reconciling with one's children in a tale of an old man, old man ways in a modern era. Uh, this show shows the struggles of adult children having to uh, deal with their parents who have memory loss or lost their marbles, um, known as, uh, uh, in today's terms, dementia. I don't want to get too into... Uh, uh, the science of it, because I'm not a scientist. From the uh, poster, I can assume most critics say that this movie is really good. Basically, look at the poster. It's like you say critics, 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 and it just kind of fades out. It's just like this movie is like asking you to punch it in the face. Um, so anyways, a movie should not have reviews on it. It makes it seem a little desperate. Thanks, notes. But what do I know? Uh, I don't make good films either. Have you ever seen any of the uh, 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 summer camp movies that I've made? They're all awful, but, you know, I know terrible. Anyways, watch this Oscar bait garbage movie that will make you cry or whatever. Alan vs. Pharaoh. This is a documentary uh, uh, kind of like bringing to life or bringing back to life uh, an open secret that Woody Allen is a creep and who married his own... Uh, adoptive daughter. Uh, let's get a heavy handed as we dive into a personal life of Woody Allen and former wife actress Mia Farrow, who in 1992 claimed that Woody Allen touched one, one of their underage daughters. But what happened next uh, put a negative light on Mia Farrow as much of the Hollywood elite and Woody Allen fans stood by Allen when she said he, uh, when, uh, he said that she was just a crazy lady. Um, everybody already knows that Alan married his adoptive daughter, which kind of kept this uh, open secret kind of ongoing, and people just kind of 
was like dealt with it. I don't know. Throughout the next couple uh, years, many people prefer to bury the past and, and uh, recent gotcha journalism will bring along another documentary about pleading to the public court of opinions about Woody Allen getting the come of he rightfully deserves. Some may say, like the art, not the man, but the art kind of reflects <laughs> the man's shenanigans. So if you watch a Woody Allen film now, you're kind of like, huh, an older man uh, hanging out with a younger girl. All right, so, uh, <laughs> That's kind of the movies that are coming out uh, this weekend and this week as well. There's a lot of other things happening as well, but I'm going to show you guys another movie from Lady Frankenstein. And spoiler alert, I didn't see an actual Lady Frankenstein in this movie, so um, there's that. So without further ado, here's the new dub and stuff. You see, I had a heart the whole time. Well, I don't think you understand how metaphors work. You must think I'm some kind of fool. For my father thinks that I am quite... Charming to all social classes. Just look at my cape. Oh, we're looking all right. We're looking how it flourishes as you walk and as you exit. It... Please mind my much older husband. You see here, I am a man of science. If you look around this room, you see all sorts of uh, science-y kind of gizmos. Sure, with all these test tubes, one can call you a doctor. But I digress. With all these pots, you can be considered a butcher. I find myself more inclined towards a candlestick maker, my dear. Perhaps even a blacksmith of flesh. Either way, it's unconventional. What is it actually you do with all these body pots? Well, then, uh, simply put, I uh, stick them together and see what works, what ticks, what all can be pushed together. Do you honestly expect us not to notice the dead body that's on the ground? Well, my expert blocking will take care of that. Well, maybe if I had a close-up. See, I got a close-up, and now I'm doing some real acting right now. Perhaps you would feel more comfortable if I left you to act by yourself. Or need other actors to bounce off of. What's wrong with you? I'm only trying to help, chap. What? What, what are you trying to say? I asked on Moonlight as an acting teacher, which, by the way, I must be on my way. We're going to do King Love for the millionth time again. Perhaps I could copy some tickets. I would love that very much. Consider it done. Bring friends. I am a school teacher. Perhaps I could bring my class with me. Ha <laughs> ha, wonderful. Wonderful. Hmm. Do you know what you've done? I know exactly what I'm doing. I just secured tickets to the hottest improv show in town. And you're coming with me, whether you like it or not. May God have mercy on us. There is no God in improv. Because I got a golden ticket. <gasps> Arthur Slugworth. Uh, give me that ticket. It's, it's my golden ticket, Arthur. I can give you wealth beyond wealth. I'm not giving you my golden ticket. Just need another secret ingredient to the everlasting cop stopper, damn it. Grandpa, Grandpa, yeah. no! Golden ticket! Hmm, it's always nice to come to the countryside and see all sorts of uh, pots and pans, and at least there's some art here. Hmm, living in squalor, I see. No room for a gimbal, or perhaps even a tripod for this room. See a nice swift pan across this room. You see a man who is clearly sleeping. Perhaps. I can wake him up. Or perhaps I could mess with him while he's trying to sleep. I say, wake up your butt, for I am here. Ah, oh, see, you come to side here. I quit your improv group. It's yes and, not no or. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time for your city council report. There's a lot going on, and I wanted to start off with rezoning. It's not the sexiest thing within the city council, but it is a very important structure in the ongoing increasing tax base, expansion of the city of Missoula, and the growth overall with infrastructure and whatnot. So, uh, with the without further ado, uh, they're talking about the Mary Jane Boulevard up to the mall in uh, area development. Most of this was a way to look towards what should go where and what infrastructure will be added. Here's Alex 
EDAM with the with what th this area's goals are. So the proposed uh, zoning is C2-2, which as you can see is consistent again with the red surrounding the parcel. Um, that's gonna be your community commercial zoning district. Um, and another thing to note is that all these parcels are located in the airport influence uh, area overlay. Per title 20 section 2085-040-I2, uh, for zoning and uh, zoning upon annexation, one of these three criteria need to be met. This uh, proposed zoning closely, mostly aligns with C, which is be consistent with the land use and zoning recommendations for the subject areas uh, set forth in the growth policy. So again, the proposed zoning is T2-2, which is consistent with the growth policy and also um, is consistent with the existing zoning um, in the surrounding areas. While developing is happening, some of the areas are looking for the higher density unit housing along with commercial properties for various businesses in the area. I doubt there will be any kind of major outlet shopping there because it's already fairly close to Reserve Street and, you know, Costco and um, uh, Ross and all those other places, TJ Maxx. Um, but there'll be, um, but part of this would be more like small cafes and other small office based areas as well for uh, small businesses or just places for how for people to have an office. I have talked about this, you know, 54 acre parcel of land for basically so much time and, um, and basically I just wanted to kind of go more into it. But this is kind of a big deal because a lot of this is in terms of development, what's happening in War II as we keep moving forward. War II is growing exponentially and has uh, annexed part of Airport Boulevard. I don't want to get too too much into it, but let's get to the uh, Territorial Land Works, which is part of the uh, uh, group that's working in this area. And this is Jason Rice, who reflects on the diversity of housing options through the rezoning. So, you know, what we have here is essentially an annexation for part of a property that's needed um, to put this whole project together that they want to do. And it's eventually 146 um, apartment units and um, plus a, a multi-use um, type building on the corner. Um, it'll be a vertical mixed use. And so um, the, the, the product is about a 1200 square foot loft type project with some really pretty cool um, industrial finishes. Um, I think it's intended to be, I think we see a lot of 850 square foot apartments going on in Missoula and this is kind of looked at to be a different product that could be for families and um, startup fa starting families and things like that in Missoula. And also today it was a big day for presentations up the Mullen Road, um, which will easily connect to the new neighborhoods. Um, England Boulevard is looking to extend all the way to uh, George Elmer Drive and through uh, Hellgate uh, Elementary. And part of this is to do with uh, the build grant and, um, but First, we're gonna talk about McNatt Flats, which covers a large area within the Remington and Herons Landing near 44 ranch estates. And they talk about annexation upon rezoning the area, which cities do to build infrastructures out of these areas for developers to hook into once uh, complete will become a part of the city when done. So there's kind of like the whole idea is like that they develop a whole kind of neighborhood with the intention of annexing them, but they don't annex them them yet until they get everything kind of hooked up and everything ready to go. It's a cost way. It's a cost-effective way to save money as well. Um, of course, the more I talk, the less you have to watch clips. Uh, so let's get through this together faster. Uh, Worth, uh, uh, sorry, they pronounce it better, but I completely forgot how they pronounce it. But an engineering company out of Great Falls, uh, W O I T H Worth, um, um, zoomed um, into the meeting to discuss their ideas for this area. Met. Uh, Hermes, civil engineer for the Great Falls Company, talks about this. The average lot size is 2.19 acres, and there's a total of 15.35 acres of developable lots. So using that 15.35 acres of developable lots, the Title 20 zoning actually allows us to calculate the maximum density by lot area, like Dave kind of touched on, and that leads us to a maximum of 650 residential and commercial spaces that could be built here, depending on future land uses in the subdivision. And that B2-2 zoning allows those land uses to be a variety of different things. And the reason for that is to allow flexibility for future projects to accomplish two things. We wanna create an initial residential population in the area, and we wanna maintain some capacity in the zoning to establish potential commercial spaces as the population grows out in that area and if demand ends up emerging. 
Of course, this won't be the end all development of this area, but will highlight the kind of neighborhood that may pop up. George Elm will be connected to England Boulevard that will go all the way to reserve and relieve traffic on Mullen. Um, in terms of what kind of development happens, it's still unclear. Uh, here's uh, Dave de Grandpa de Grandpa with uh, the city. I uh, know it, but not with the city, but this is Dave de Grandpa talking about that. We, we can't really condition, we can't really make certain types of commercial development happen. We can't really, we don't have the authority or the plans in place to make mixed use development happen of a certain scale, but we can provide the zoning. We can provide the opportunity for it to happen by providing the appropriate zoning. And so, um, you know, can we get, can, can I as a planner or can our staff guarantee that mixed use development will occur on the property? I can't, we don't have the ability to do that. But what we can do as a city is against provide the right circumstances, provide the right zoning um, so that it can, it can develop. Most of the area has potential, but still has a way to go in terms of development, post streets and grid hookups, uh, city sewer and whatnot. The idea of rezoning would give the city more uh, say in what kind of development may occur. And that's kind of like the big thing with in terms of rezoning and Mayor John Ingen comments on um, why they're so invested in this particular area. Uh, this project originally came to us as a TED proposal. We pushed to subdivision so that we would have more ability to guide the project um, and, uh, and were successful in that regard. Uh, but getting to a development agreement in this case uh, just hasn't been on the table. This area is newer than many of the other nearby areas that have uh, already have plans in place. And so far, these plans are overlays and many council members are looking to clarify what this land will do for Missoula and what kind of potential for unit and housing, how dense it is, how dense is it going to be. Uh, another big thing that would help this area is part of the uh, build project. Like I mentioned before, the build project is better utilizing investments to leverage development. And the whole idea is that they get the developers who are building the houses there to help build the infrastructures and connectivity with, with it, which is grant money from the federal government to give to communities who are doing developments like this particular area. Jeremy Keene, uh, Development Services, basically talks about the costs. As, as you're all probably aware, we received a $15 million grant from federal government to help us build out a network of roads in the Mullen Road area. And um, that, that will roughly cover about 50% of the cost of the project. Uh, we applied for more money, didn't get all of it, um, have continued to, to apply for additional grant opportunities. But um, right now we're, we're about 50% of the way there in terms of funding. So uh, in addition to funds, uh, impact fees um, will also cover the cost of additional development, which usually falls on the homeowners moving into the area Group, um, part of impact fees is if you actually look it up, it, 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 the uh, quote in it is growth should pay it its own way. Impacts to current residents would remain minimal. Um, Jeremy uh, also responds to what if there was no money for infrastructure, and this is what he has to say. Yeah, so if we didn't have the build grant, the, the, the infrastructure would likely develop as it has in the past, which is piecemeal. And you can see that in areas like Pleasant View where you have a portion of Mary Jane Boulevard it's constructed but doesn't connect anything and doesn't provide much function or George Elmer Drive which um, you know extends out to 44 Ranch and then stops so um, so it would it would happen it would happen slowly and it may not provide the the same functionality of having complete connections that we can achieve with with the build grant and so um, the grant get, allows us to subsidize that work and um, and provides a big jump start on getting that infrastructure in place and taking advantage of current development that would provide a streamlined approach to connectivity, England Boulevard, like I said before, hasn't always connected to reserve streets. Um, England Boulevard was basically just kind of a, a locked out area neighborhood and people have to travel all the way around to Broadway to get to some of those outlet areas. So it was kind of like a road that was incomplete. Um, and it took quite a bit of time to even connect these roads, and these weren't even utilized through the build grant from what I remember. Uh, final consideration will be for March 1st, and there's still time for public comments uh, until then. So far, the public works. Uh, oh, yeah, so that's the final consideration. So the, this is a, was a public hearing, and you have until March 1st to send your uh, thoughts uh, about what this area is going to be all about, what you think. Um, but so far, this is basically kind of like they want to turn this into more of the city of Missoula, but it's um, 
but they don't know, know exactly what to do with it, so they're just basically copying and pasting other kind of neighborhood plans in that area just to kind of, like, do something with it. Uh, so far, uh, during the public works, um, Sagan's uh, Street Bridge is looking to rename uh, that reflects the past for future christening of our new bridge. With County Commissioner Dave Stormer kicking off this session, he goes into detail about this opportunity. Coming out of today's meeting, I would make the ask of uh, the city of Missoula to join in uh, join Missoula County in support of this proposal that will be taken before the Transportation Commission. And I think that could be uh, accomplished in a couple of different ways, either via a resolution or via, via a letter of support that we would attach to our submittal packet to the commission. The and so far, the proposed name would be called the Bear Track Bridge, named after their uh, former sub chief, who was very crucial in terms of the Lewis and Clark uh, basically gr granting access through uh, Missoula Valley. And uh, his name was Grizzly Bear Track. And that was the name he was given uh, as he was uh, being raised here. Um, the, me uh, the meeting invited folks from the Salish Guni tribes to give some history of the area, focus on the renaming. So Tony um, Ikinsola and um, Thompson Smith represent the presentation of the history of Bear Track Bridge. Um, here is Thompson Smith opening. As a native, as, as, as having history in this area uh, where my ancestors uh, lived, it, it's, it's always gonna be home. It, it feels good to be in this, always be in this area. Uh, you know, I take them with me everywhere I go uh, to follow in their footprints and their tracks. I even, I even take them with me to the Grizz games when I go out there to the stadium. Smith also hopes that this could be left to our children and grandchildren to enjoy as our parents and grandparents left for us. Uh, Tony in Consola uh, gives us a slideshow, pre slideshow presentation, a little bit more about the history of uh, Grizz of Bear Track himself. It is a measure of the depth of that connection to the land that many of these names go back to the time when the land was prepared for the human beings yet to come. And so when we think of the last couple hundred years, beginning with the arrival of Lewis and Clark depicted in this masterpiece by Charlie Russell that hangs in the Montana legislature, uh, that really is only the last re most recent little snippet of this vast thousands of years of tribal relationship with this place. And this, um, in this painting, the, the people are meeting, uh, the Salish people are meeting Lewis and Clark at the place known in English as Ross's Hole. And the head chief at that time, as recorded in Lewis and Clark's journals, was a man named Chetskaimi, Three Eagles. And his subchief, one of his subchiefs, was the first Suitis Simcha, and that means grizzly bear tracks. That's where the bear tracks name comes from. His English given name was known as Alexander Bear Tracks. Um, he was born in, in 1790 and lived into the 1880s. Um, a long life and during Lewis and Clark uh, was, beginning, was being groomed to become the chief of the Salish area, of the Salish tribe. Uh, also a medicine man and greatly respected and a, played a key role in the Hellgate Treaty negotiations of 1855. The family would later be known as the Vanderbergs, a large family with a strong Salish lineage. Uh, Tony talks about the removal of the natives from the Missoula Valley um, as of 1891. So this is what he had to say. Uh, Louis Vanderberg stuck with Chief Charlo right up until the forced removal in October 1891. And as they approached Higgins Bridge, this is a picture in the 1870s, and in 1891, it was even in worse shape uh, because it had been washed out in the early 1880s and had yet to be uh, reconstructed. But as they approached this bridge, um, th this is where Louis Vandenberg led one of the three major parties of the Salish uh, through the Missoula area. They approached this site and they, some of them may have crossed the rickety thing that uh, spanned the river at that time, but it's believed that most of the people forded the river, something the Salish were renowned at doing, highly skilled. 
And this is a picture, actually, the only known picture of Salish people fording. It's probably the Bitter River, but one of the rivers during the forced removal in 1891. And so far, the Vanderbergs uh, placed a major cultural impact in the tribes, keeping their traditions alive and passing down their knowledge through their families. Uh, the city council responds to the proposal and member Murder Becerra kicks it off. As Tony and Kashola said, you know, the past is an important piece of how we move forward. So I, um, I just would like to express my full support of this. Um, I think that the renaming and rededication is long overdue. Um, it's the right thing to do. Um, and we have a great opportunity with the bridge um, reconstruction to do just that. Uh, Jesse Ramos reflects on Tony's presentation. And, um, after listening to, to Tony, I mean, I, I think it's safe to say that um, out of all of our council witnesses, and no offense to them, uh, Tony's one of the, one of the few that I was I was disappointed when he stopped talking. I could have listened to him for for days or or weeks. Just such a, a wealth of information, and I just think this is a really cool project. And and I'd like to support Gwen's idea too that if we can memorialize this in some way, um, I think that would be fantastic. So I, I I'm greatly in support of this, and uh, would be happy to do anything I can to help because I, I just think it's an amazing project and. Thank you so much to the speakers for so much history and um, and I, I love the name as well. So thank you all. With overwhelming support from the city and the county, a letter of support for the renaming of the bridge will be sent to the State Transportation Commission for a recommendation. Uh, the, former, uh, the former proposal will be take place on March 10th and the commission will look at it during their April meeting. Uh, for more history on this, you can actually watch the public works meeting. It's actually very rich. I gave you only the cliff notes of the actual meeting, but it's very cool to kind of see what the old Higgins Bridge was. Even the Higgins Bridge has its own history because there was a flood that washed the bridge away. So there's a lot of uh, cool history in terms of Missoula. And the city council meets every Monday except for uh, holidays and fifth Mondays of the month. And you can find out more information about the city of Missoula by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is your source for everything Missoula. You got your city council meetings, you got all your committee meetings. Uh, I suggest you actually look at the calendar view of your uh, of the of these meetings and then you can see what's coming up and what's going on there and you click on the, any of those uh, dates and links and you'll be able to find them. All right, so, uh, up next, we got your latest COVID report in which they will probably be talking, in which most of their uh, COVID reports have to do with vaccination. So if you wanna learn more about that, you can look up Cindy Farr's uh, YouTube channel, but I'm gonna give you a taste of it on my show right now. Hi, my name is Cindy Farr and I'm the incident commander for the Missoula City County Health Department's COVID-19 response. Today is Tuesday, February 23rd, and this is our COVID briefing. We've had 8,129 cumulative positive COVID cases in Missoula County to date with 13 new cases since yesterday. And we've had 82 deaths associated with COVID-19 here in Missoula County. We currently have 117 active COVID-19 cases. And those active cases and their identified close contacts remain in isolation and quarantine and are being supported as needed. Our current average incidence per 100,000 people is now down to 15, which is great. Um, the state of Montana is reporting 99,040 cumulative COVID cases, which is up 240 cases since yesterday. And there are now 1,922 active cases in the state with 85 active hospitalizations. And there have been 1,346 deaths related to COVID-19 statewide. The University of Montana has had 655 cumulative UM associated cases since the beginning of fall semester back in August with one new case reported since yesterday. There are currently 10 active UM associated cases. Missoula County has now administered 25,130 doses of COVID vaccine with 8,763 people having received both doses of vaccine. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about COVID-19 variants and COVID vaccine. There are currently three variants in the US that are known to the CDC. One is out of the UK, one is from South Africa, and one is from Brazil. Right now, 47 states have reported at least one of the three variants that has been detected in their state. The most common variant present in the US is the UK variant with roughly 1,600 cases re reported across 44 states. The South African variant has has had 22 cases across 10 states, and there are five recorded cases of a Brazilian variant across four states. So here's what we know about variants. 
Viruses constantly change through mutation, so the emergence of variants is actually really common. With other viruses, we've seen variants emerge and disappear, and we've also seen them emerge and persist. And it's just really too early to tell which of these is going to be the case for the COVID variants that we're starting to see. Scientists are actively studying the variants that have been identified so that they can understand how these cases differ from the original COVID-19 strain. The, the changes to the virus could affect things like how they spread and what happens to those infected with that strain of the virus. Right now, these variants do appear to spread more quickly and more easily than the original COVID-19 strain. So far, studies suggest that antibodies generated through the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines do actually recognize these variants. So if you are able to get a vaccine, you should be protected, at least from the variants that they've found so far. Um, this is still being closely investigated and more studies are underway right now. So as of right now, no variants have been detected here in Montana. Um, COVID-19 tests are being sampled at random to detect for variants and samples from individuals who travel to places known to have variants are also tested for variants. We've been getting a lot of questions about whether there are extra steps that you can take to protect yourself from contracting a variant strain of COVID-19. And I just want to let you know that the same precautions that protect you from the original COVID-19 will continue to protect you from the variants. So you want to continue social distancing and keeping your social circles small, wear a mask whenever you are with people that are outside of your own household and frequently wash your hands. If a person that you know has recently traveled to an area with variants, you might reconsider visiting with them until they've stayed symptom free for about 10 days. Okay, so that's all I have on variants today. I will definitely keep you updated as we get more information. So now let's revisit some vaccine information. Our health department public clinic does continue to operate at the Old Lucky's Market site at Southgate Mall, and we do continue to open up scheduling as vaccine becomes available. We're not quite at a point where um, we can have consistent scheduling, so basically as soon as we know we can open up a clinic, then we open up the scheduling for that. Um, sometimes it's short notice, so I just want to thank you for your patience um, in bearing with us on that as um, it hasn't been real consistent for when we're getting vaccine. Um, we are booking those appointments through a link on the covid19.missoula.co website and through 258info um, with option number three for any people who do not have internet access and need some help getting scheduled for a vaccination. We want to remind everyone that anyone caught mis misrepresenting themselves to book a COVID vaccine appointment at our clinic will have their appointment canceled. Um, if you've tried unsuccessfully to book an appointment, we understand that it can be really frustrating, but we just want to encourage you to keep on trying. The supply remains low and the demand remains high, which makes scheduling an appointment feel really tough. But ultimately, um, in the end, everyone who wants to get a vaccine will be able to get one. We don't have an estimate yet as to when the next tier will start, but the county's vaccine coordination team is working to get an estimate on that. There are just a lot of factors to consider. Um, so we've been cautious when it comes to, to making an estimate on time, but when we do have one, we will let you know. Last, we wanna remind everyone that your second dose of the COVID vaccine is critical for you to get the full protection that the vaccine offers. Anyone who books a first dose appointment is also committing to getting that second dose appointment 21 or 28 days later, depending on whether you get a Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. So we just wanna ask that everyone make their second dose appointment a priority. You are guaranteed a second dose, but only if you show up to that second appointment. Um, we don't reschedule appointments unless a patient is experiencing a genuine emergency, which has to be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. So that's all I have for today. Um, as always, you can subscribe to me on YouTube under my name, Cindy Farr, that's C-I-N-D-Y-F-A-R-R. -R. Click the notification bell so you get notified when additional videos are uploaded. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. We put lots of great COVID information on our Facebook page. That's at the Missoula City County Health Department Facebook. Um, we also do post information about our other programs that we have available at the health department there as well. Um, you can call 258-INFO if you're having symptoms of COVID-19 and would like to schedule a test or if an appointment or a vaccination clinic um, scheduling opportunity comes open and you don't have internet access, you would call that same number 258-INFO and select option number three. Um, you can also call that number if you just have any general questions. And as always, you can check our website at MissoulaInfo.com. And everybody stay healthy and I will see you again on Thursday. 
Hey guys, welcome back. Let me talk to you guys a little bit about Zach. Um, the Zach is the Zootown Arts Community uh, Center, and they ho have been hosting uh, social distancing sessions. And this time they've partnered up with KBGA, um, and tonight, Friday, but I'm taping this on Thursday, don't tell anyone, uh, but <laughs> Friday night, the whole point is that pay, play it forward with Ash Natani and Elijah J Jalil for uh, here in Montana, and it's part of their volume one of the KGBA series. And it's going to be happening from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. roughly. Um, it starts at 7.30, and it's going to be live streamed on Zach's Facebook page, YouTube page. And if you can't, if you don't want to go to any of those, you can also go to MCAT.org and watch it via our local live. Also, Saturday, it's a social distancing. is Canta Brazil, and it is a uh, kind of like a... Uh, funk band kind of deal and they're going to be playing some music for you guys as well so they've been usually doing a lot of bands for the last couple of weeks uh, so for the next couple of weeks we're going to see uh, Mudslide Charlie at the first Saturday of, of March will be Mudslide Charlie and then we're going to have another comedy uh, pandemic birthday special which is happening in mid-March so there's just a lot of stuff going on with the Zoo Town and you can go on to the zootownarts.org for more information and events coming up there um, but let's talk a little bit more about MCAT news. Uh, MCAT, we're uh, moving forward with a lot of things. I noticed that uh, we're hooking up more of our light board, which allows us in the studio to kind of control the lighting grid that we're, we put in there. Um, so it's going to be pretty cool uh, moving forward as well. I'm just kind of uh, talking a little bit about some of our technology. But we're going to be hopefully uh, opening at, at some point. But for right now, um, we're kind of just uh, doing a lot of community uh, videos much like live streams some events and whatnot um heavily doing a lot of those city council and um uh committee meetings for the missoula county missoula city governments um just a lot of different um, um meetings and groups that were formed through the city um but yeah um there's really not much more to talk about uh now it's, you know it's just another friday um but I want to thank you guys for joining me, and I'm going to end my show uh, but with a little bit uh, more of that Valentine's special that I showed earlier in my show, uh, the rest of it. So without further ado, here's this, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. It is the last weekend in February. Take care, guys. This is how, this is a little secret to any cartoon people who want to be in the industry. This is how you do teeth. Uh, I see. It's kind of like start from the middle and go up instead of start from the uh, top or bottom of the mouth. All right, I think uh, I'm almost done, but I should add some color. Let me see. I don't get to see. <laughs> I, like, I like it. It's like one of those like pictures that you see at your parents' house. <laughs> it's like some artist you've never heard of that just made some weird drawing. I drew, I drew, I drew two Ricardius. I don't know why this is reminding me of Q-Bert right now, but these legs really, really look like Q-Berts. Yeah, they're they're very polygon. Uh, <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like. I don't like. I don't like when I just color this. This kind of creeps me out. You don't like your own drawing? I mean, <laughs> it scares me. It scares me. <laughs> Why'd you draw if it scares you? Because it's funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny at the time, and that was scaring me. Okay, there, I got my two Ricardios finished. If you guys want to see them. I see them. Uh, it's up there right now. <laughs> I don't like either of these yeah. guys. They scare me. Yeah, no, that's, that's good, scary. though. Is that Tom Hanks? <laughs> Is that Tom Hanks? Yeah. Is that young Tom Hanks? It could be. Hey, look, yeah. look, he's crying. He kind of looks like you, Josh. Does he? In a way. I just want to put it on record that I, I don't look very much like this guy. <laughs> no, not at all. You gotta check out the Photoshop. The only thing you yourself. It's so cheesy. I hate myself. <laughs> I defy you. It's so deep. That, that looks really good. I really liked what you did with uh, uh, Dr. Professor Hartman. Yeah. Uh, I started over. Oh, okay. I'm, not, I'm not great at drawing humans, so... But you look at them every day. God. <laughs> Wait, what, what happened? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like me. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like... 
one of these two is not like the other. Can you find out which one is which? <laughs> Who is Josh <laughs> Cook? I, I can't tell. Take the shot. Take the shot. <laughs> Such a weird crop. <laughs> Of his hair. Well, now you can just get a good hit. Right? He kind of has that classic Markiplier hair from like 2013. Right? I wonder where Rowan is. Yeah, he said he was going to grab <laughs> something. He's oh, there. He's speaking of the devil. Oh, he's back. I'm hey. back. He said something. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just like, ah, oh, geez, he's been gone for a while. How long does it take to grab something? It's, uh,. Grab, grab something to eat, I mean. <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> yeah. oh. Alright, so uh, I guess the next assignment is uh, you're drawing Buddy Love okay. from Nutty Professor. Josh, are you tracing? Yeah. <laughs> it's great. So I'm basically making uh, Nightmare Eddie Murphy. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Tracing doesn't always work. Yeah. Are you drawing Eddie Murphy like a, the stand of <laughs> <laughs> Buddy Love? <laughs> Nutty Professor's stand, um, Buddy Love. Yes, <laughs> I love it. That that's, that's great. I'm gonna start a GoFundMe to get Rowan uh, internet. <laughs> Just get him better. <laughs> It's yeah, it, uh, it's like something aside from whatever like witchcraft is internet. pulling on. <laughs> the neighbor stealing the neighbor's internet. I don't look like Hartman, and he looks like Tom Hanks. Why does it sound like? Why does it sound like somebody who's into? Who, why does it sound like somebody who's in denial? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> Rowan. <laughs> you look like a nerd. He's a nerd. He's a nerd. Buddy Love's hand comes out. Comes out of the. Uh... This this doesn't this feels less like a stand and more of uh, Attack on Titan with him coming out of uh, uh, the Nutty Professor. He's coming out. Stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's her subconscious. Oh, <laughs> subconscious. Those are the the devil and angel on your shoulders. But it's just Eddie Murphy and Eddie Murphy. <laughs> big Jerfy. Big Jerfy, big chungus. There, I'm done. I don't wanna do anymore. Okay. They don't even give me advice. They just yell and scream. It's showtime. No more, no more Eddie, Mur no more Eddie Murphy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, here's a good one. Um, pick a trio, any trio okay. you want, and put it out in front of the Powerpuff Girls end screen with the heart. I'm actually going the Photoshop route this time around. <laughs> The burning of the boys. <laughs> 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 okay, that's better than mine already. <laughs> I don't even know about the dead. Is that a dead meme already? You guys um, almost. This is but it, it still works. <laughs> oh man. Ron, are you trying a pickle with glasses or a, or a finger with goggles? No, you, you you'll know you'll know what it is if you've seen the movie. It's you've minion. seen the movie. Oh, it's a minion. <laughs> <laughs> you're oh, minion? you're doing the the minion from the minion movies. If you're watching the stream, the you, you can movie. literally see he's looking up minions as a reference. <laughs> uh, you can see it right there. It looks like he has a big brain, but it's like flipped ninety degrees and it's like poking out <laughs> vertically out of his head. Ron, why does he have so long legs? <laughs> he looks like a walking finger with goggles. <laughs> like a walk he looks like a finger with like a little fungus hair thing on top of him. That's what he looks like. like. That's what he looks like. <laughs> What's that thing he's playing with? It's another minion. 
It's the one. It's the one with the one eyeball. He's got his little. He's got his little. Uh, he's got his little. He's got his little knapsack. Right there. Oh, you're <laughs> ginormous. <laughs> <laughs> you make it a huge one. No, that's him. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can make him extra wide. <laughs> yeah. Why am I doing this? Why am I drawing this? Wow, I unfinished. Uh... <laughs> yeah, what a transparent <laughs> background you got there. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Oh I like how God. one, uh, one half of the face has a mouth and the other one doesn't. I don't know, their eyes are red. And uh, there they are. Honestly, <laughs> it looks like uh, the minion in the background looks like two minions. <laughs> it looks like two minions. Yeah. That's a masterful minion. <laughs> masterful minion. <laughs> Wonderful <laughs> minion, fellow. <laughs> a fine, See, rare like... minion. I just realized that the, <laughs> the dudes in the center are the same person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of it's, it's, it's kind of got a weird optical illusion. For that they're, there's they two. are fully merged in the center. <laughs> they even look like they got the same halves of the same mouth. What? <laughs> <laughs> we should draw a uh, Super Grover from Sesame Street as like an anime uh, protagonist, like an anime like movie intro, or like yeah. Whoa, uh... <laughs> is that she? Is, is that Mandrill from Mega Man? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on That's a Spark Mandrill. Is that Squidward with a headband? Yeah, just keep it on run. Oh man, I just looked at that. That's awesome. <laughs> Can't wait to see it in color, HD color. Put in HD color. Put it in HD. <laughs> <laughs> so you can do me, This is also for my deviant art. <laughs> There's no way you can beat me, Grover! Ah! Nice. Streets of Sesame. <laughs> <laughs> I like the <laughs> eyes you added. The streets of Sesame are mine to protect. So is that it? Yeah, I think so. Alright. Uh, yeah, let's, let's look at all your art. Let's work our way backwards. So this one was the minion one. The Eddie Murphy and... Eddie Murphy. We got Heartman. <laughs> He's crying. We got <laughs> got Ricardo. We <laughs> this bothers me. It actually bothers me. I don't like it. I actually really don't like this drawing. <laughs> it came from your imagination. It's not even that I don't. It's not even that the fact that I don't think it's not like well drawn or anything. Is it's just that the, it bothers me. I mean, it's definitely accurate to the character for sure. And then there, there it is. <laughs> Nicol Nicol <laughs> Nicol <laughs> oh, that's good. Nickelodeon, hire me, please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a storyboarder. <laughs> if you want as a storyboard artist, this is me officially calling it. Uh, do you have any last uh, parting words? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, well, I hope we uh, come back soon. And this is a message to COVID-19. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Go away.